All right, it's Ty here. We are about to learn not just speed reading, because people want to know speed reading, they ask me all the time, but smart reading. It's a new technique that I've been pioneering as I've worked with literally thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even reaching millions of people now. So uh, this is kind of a bonus thing that I wanted to do for so long. I'm glad that I've got the time to do. So you may have found me, you know, some of you have bought books from me. You've seen my TED talk on why I read a book a day and why you should too. Some of you are in the 67 steps system. You're in the investor entrepreneur mini MBA, learning how to grow a business, become an investor and entrepreneur. Some of you are in my invitation only inner circle. Everybody I come in contact with asks me almost always, how can I read more? I think all of us, you and I both understand the intrinsic value that being able to take in the wisdom, knowledge, and experience of the world's smartest people, whether they be alive and too busy to meet with us in person, or whether they be dead, we still want to know what they know. And you will run into people that say, books aren't important. I suggest you ignore those people because there's no evidence that that's true. There is very little evidence, and there's a lot of evidence uh, that almost every person who has an impact, who rises above the crowd, which I'm sure you aspire, just like me, to do, books has played an integral part, whether it be Einstein, Tesla, or Bill Gates. Taking in the knowledge of other people is what Richard Dawkins in The Selfish Gene calls simulation. And simulation is the most powerful tool, maybe the reason that we have such big brains. We have the ability to watch somebody else put their hand in the fire and get burned and go, I don't have to put my hand in the fire because I have a brain that tells me if I do the same thing that that person does, I'll get a result that I don't want. And we learn faster. If you want to save decades, off of your learning curve. Because make no mistake, the average successful person takes 12 to 20 years and many people take a lifetime. But if you ask them, they'll say, well, you know what? Half of that time was wasted doing things that I could have learned from other people. I always say, you know, I remember I was in second grade and I read a book, I can still vividly remember it for some reason, and it said, the world is round, not flat. And I never second guessed it. It was just a book, it was book knowledge and I didn't have to prove it. It's like Sir Isaac Newton said, if I'm great, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants. You must stand upon the shoulders of giants and not waste your life figuring out what already has been figured out. You know, if I had taken my life and was on video here and said, guys, I spent the last 10 years of my life confirming and finding some amazing discovery out for myself. What I found out was the world's round, it's not flat. I went for years on a boat and I tried to get to the horizon, I never fell off. So I realized I could go all the way back to my starting point. I did complex math to prove the math, you know, using angles that the world can't be flat. I went into outer space and looked down and saw the world was clearly an or, you know, a three-dimensional orb ball. It's round, guys. It's not flat. You would look at me and look at this video and go, that guy's an idiot. He wasted a decade learning, exploring, trying to prove what's already been clearly proven. And unfortunately, the reason most people don't get what they want out of life is they spend the majority of their life not simulating through the experience of other people, but trying to prove it themselves, making the mistakes themselves. What Dawkins says in that book is that trial and error, trial is costly in terms of time, and too much error is deadly. You can die, whether it be the ho your hopes and dreams, figuratively die, or your physical health. If you don't know stuff, there's tremendous uh, pain associated with that ignorance. And so, the upside, though, is that in a world of 7 billion people, of increasing complexity, I just read a book, Riveted, and I read another book, uh, what, uh, Where Good Ideas Come From. The pace of learning is growing so rapidly, 
that the greatest skill you can have is the ability to get through new material quickly and remember it. Now, this course you're about to get act, you're getting access to here is primarily about how to get through it. There's another uh, course, mini course that I do on memory. This is enough here to handle. Focus on this for now, and you can you know get access at another time to the full memory and recall. I will talk about how to increase your memory and recall of what you read um, in this course, but I've got some even more advanced stuff. But don't worry, just going through this right now, and if you follow what I've laid out, six or seven uh, uh, techniques that you must follow, you will see that naturally, the speed with which you read, the quality of books with, uh, that you read, and the recall will all increase, and most importantly, most importantly, we're not reading just to read. The quality of your life will go up. I'd like you to take 67 days, the next 67 days, and take a reading challenge. Follow what you're about to learn, and then answer back to me, because I've done this over and over, and without fail, everybody says, wow, this has revolutionized my health and understanding my body. I'll be in shape, lean, fit. This has revolutionized my bank account. This has revolutionized my social, love, friends, family, and romance, and my happiness is up from having understanding. Not only are you going to be the smartest person in the room, but that's not important. It's not about showing off. There's always someone smarter and someone dumber, but more importantly, you're going to become somebody that can improve your own life, and you'll be able to keep up with the pace of knowledge that's out there in the world today. The highly successful people in the world, for example, the most successful CEOs read on average a book a week, 50 books a year. If you go up the chain to the most successful people, just look. Look on the Forbes list. Warren Buffett says he reads eight hours a day now. Bill Gates, if you go to his personal site, it's basically a blog. That's literally how he wants to put himself out there, not as the necessarily, you know, the the Gates Foundation, I mean, he does do that in the founder of Microsoft, but it's he's about books and he shows you what he read. This is the same throughout history. Alexander the Great traveled with a library. He was personally mentored by Aristotle, but he conquered the world. And in great part, it was due to the mentality and those tricks of the trade that he learned with his traveling library and mentors. Now. Hopefully you're not trying to conquer the world literally, but you are trying to find the good life, health, wealth, love, and happiness. You will need mentors. I call that the law of 33%. You will need people 10 to 20 years ahead of you. It's the pattern. Einstein had a mentor that he had lunch with every Thursday. Uh, Oprah Winfrey had two mentors. Bill Gates had a mentor. Warren Buffett had Benjamin Graham. Mark Zuckerberg had a mentor. Denzel Washington had Sidney Poitier. Mahatma Gandhi had a mentor. The Dalai Lama says Mahatma Gandhi was his mentor. It's a clear pattern of success. Unfortunately, all the great mentors or many of the great mentors are either too busy doing what they do to help you and I personally, or they're not alive anymore or they live too far away. So that leaves us with books. Books not in an end in and of themselves, but as a tool to get you health, wealth, love, and happiness. You're about to see a series of videos, and before I get into that, I wanna give you the big picture right here. So this is kind of the jumpstart video to get you going, and then you can watch uh, the rest of them, which will be step-by-step step a little bit more in depth. But the first thing to know is that book right there, I'm just picking a random one I've been reading, Jack Welch's book, Winning, I'm going to give you kind of all the components really fast, and then I'm going to explain them in the subsequent videos, right? I'm going to give you the big picture because I hate when people save all the good stuff for later. So the first thing is, what's my, what's my reading ritual? I have three reading rituals. I read morning, lunch, afternoon. I set intervals. I like 15 minutes in each interval. That's 45 minutes. I have a timer. I have my book. In the mornings, I read classic, The Soap of the Brain, at Afternoon, I use it to take a nap. I read a how-to business relative to my career or relative to my he health. You know, something that gives me a tangible. The morning classics are more big picture philosophy. I get technique. 
Then at night, I read biographies to help me go to sleep and to give me courage. We'll talk more about that in a second or in the next videos. Uh, then I get the book. I have a certain amount of ingredients I have with each book. Obviously, the book is the first one. Secondly, where I'm sitting. I like to not sit, if at all possible. Daniel Lieberman, or uh, uh, yeah, Daniel Lieberman, the Harvard professor, says sitting is not part of the natural physiology of the human body. So the best is to lay down, put your feet up, uh, or you know that's my preferred technique, resting uh, while my feet are up. So I got that set. Can't always do it because sometimes I eat at the same time. But when I can, like I'm in bed for lunch, taking a nap, or at night, uh, I put my legs up. Then I like to have a bookmark. And I use fancy stancy ones like this napkin that happened to me. I use whatever. Then I use a simple, simple black pen so that I can just take notes. I take notes right in the book. Never be afraid in my opinion. I write right here. I just circle the big concept, and occasionally, if it's amazing, I'll write a few words in my own words here. Then, I also sometimes write the best stuff in the back, but we're gonna get to more on how to do that. I'm just giving you the big picture. Okay, then I like my iPhone. If it's a great book, I'll buy it on my iBooks too, so that I can take my most important notes by highlighting them with my finger here, and then they're stored forever. So if I happen to lose the book, I'll have them here. That's optional, I'm just telling you what I do, okay? Then I have my timer on my iPhone. You can have any kind of timer, your Android or a real timer. I set it, I divide how many minutes I wanna read per day. I, I like to read 45 minutes minimum a day. So I divide it in three intervals, 15 minutes a pop. I set that thing for 15 minutes. I've got this book, boom, I've got parameters. Now I, for one or two seconds, I think, what's the end game goal of reading this book? Okay, I was reading this book cause I wanted, uh, you know, like, management. I'm, I'm, I need that how to, I'm hiring a lot of people. So I go in there with intention and I go, I'll be good to just get one nugget. This guy, Jack Welch built a company, added $400 billion of net worth to the market cap of GE. I'm not going to learn everything this guy learned in 40 years, building a half a trillion dollar net worth for a company in 15 minutes, but I can get one golden nugget. So then I start by the table of contents. I read the nuggets, I, I read the uh, uh, jacket. I wanna know why I should trust Jack Welch. That unlocks the authority bias in your brain so you'll learn faster. I read the jacket, I read what other people say. Then I start in after the table content, I read the first chapter and the introduction. Sometimes they're one and the same, sometimes there is no introduction. But I find the introduction first chapter and then I move to the last chapter. Then I come back to the table contents and say, which chapter will most fulfill what I'm trying to get? In this case, it was learn about management and I'll read one or two more chapters depending on how much time I have. Now, I do know how to speed read, but what you're learning now is what I call smart reading. There is a difference. So, uh, as I go through this, I'm circling relevant things I'm walking away with it and I'm not afraid of FOMO. I go, you know what? It's okay. I got enough from this book. You're going to learn how to make a books your how to make a book one of your 150 friends. I talk about that in an upcoming video. I put this thing back on my shelf. I'm now mentally cataloged because I read the table of contents. I will remember if there's ever a time that I need to uh, reread this book if I need to get some knowledge. And if it's in my top 150, I'll come back and probably read this at least once a year. Okay? So you're about to learn, it's just the beginning, a whole bunch of counterintuitive things, things that unfortunately you and I were not taught in elementary school, junior high, high school, or university, and we're definitely not taught them as adults. And for that reason, we are held back more often than we realize by the available amount of knowledge that we have. So, I want you to unlock the next set of videos, just answer this one question I have for you. What's the main goal you wanna have from going through this little quick mini video series on how to read uh, on smart reading? So just put it below, maybe you're, is to read one book a week or one book a month. It's to read a series of Get Better for University or to learn a new language. What's your one goal? Let's define it and then let's go through the next videos. It won't take you long. 
and uh, double down and invest in yourself. Knowledge, like Buffett says, the more you learn, the more you earn. The happier you will be, the healthier, wealthier, more love and more happiness you'll find. And it comes not just as you're about to learn in the next video, just through book smarts, but it comes through instinctual building of skills, which comes from books, mentors, YouTube videos, audiobooks, seminars, in person, internships, apprenticeships, all kinds of stuff. This is one of the tools in your tool belt, but remember, it's a powerful one, a powerful one, and one of the most underutilized in the world. You will rise above the crowd if you have this tool in your tool belt. All right, answer that question, what your goal is, and I will see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. So, the next step in this smart reading process, not just speed reading, not just bragging rights, but instinctual knowledge going into your head. This sounds counterintuitive to what I've said, but it's not. If you read between the lines, you'll understand what I mean. It's not about how many books you read per se, although volume of books is helpful, but I'd much rather read somebody or meet somebody that says, Ty, I want you to invest in my business. I say, why should I? You say, well, in the last 10 years, I've read the best 150 books of all time over and over and over again to the point where I've nearly memorized those 10 most important books about health, wealth, love, and happiness, or those 10, I'm sorry, those 150 books most relevant to the business. Or I meet some person that says, oh, Ty, I read a book every day. I read, you know, Twilight vampire stories, and I read this. I want a person who's focused on the right books. So it's not only volume of books, although volume is important. If you only read two books over and over, I believe that won't give you the breadth of knowledge that you need. You need to be eclectic enough. And I believe, and I've chosen this 150 as the number, not based on my own gut feeling, but based on what we know about the human brain. Now, I've adapted it a little bit and had poetic license, but the original uh, science behind 150 is from Robin Dunbar, who was a sociologist, science, social scientist, and he basically said the human mind can have about 150 relationships in an optimal setting. That's what the mind, or I should say, that's what our brains are adapted for. Not to say you, you know, on Facebook you might have 3,000 friends, but if you think about it in a social setting, 150 friends, you also need to keep track of how each of their friends, so 150 friends is more like keeping track of 10,000 webs of, uh, 10,000 points in a web of relationships. Now, books, obviously, you don't need to keep track of how one book relates to the other, but I think 150 is a good number. Uh, that gives you, if you divide up the books you read, and these are non-fiction books. You could read some, you know, if you like some entertainment, that's okay too. But 150 books, mostly non-fiction, a few fiction, key fiction books that you compile a list, okay? Now, you can use my list to start, but over time, you can adapt your own. So should be above this video, depending on where you're watching it, my list of, you know, 100, 150 most important books that I think everybody should have on their bookshelf. And, and read over and over and over again. So the reason, the nice thing about 150, if you divide those book into like four categories, okay? Books on health. So that gives you about 30, 40 books on health. You gotta know your own body. 30 or 40 books that, and those are books you read over and over and over again. 30 or 40 books you're gonna read about finances and wealth and business and your career. 30 or 40 there. 30 or 40 books on social relationships, on love. Remember, I was reading Good Science by this Princeton uh, philosopher, um, Princeton uh, economist and uh, Nobel Prize winning uh, researcher, Daniel Kahneman, and he said, if you have money but you're lonely, the money will not make you happy. So I just saw the movie Foxcatcher with Channing Tatum and uh, Steve Carell, and it's a story of, true story, based on a true story of the DuPont family, John DuPont. It's a tragic story. I won't give away what happens in the movie in case you see it, but you see there a man at one point in the movie. Steve Carell plays him very well. Might get an Academy Award. He said, you know, I, I only had one friend growing up. 
and then I found out that my mom had paid him to be my friend. So as a lonely man, turned into mental illness, turned into, even though he had helicopters flying him around the world and mansions and all the money he wanted. So you need to read 30 or 40 books on the most cutting edge and some old school knowledge of uh, books, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, of social, social life. And lastly, books on happiness. So those can be books on the intangibles, the character traits that it takes, books on courage like Kuntiki, uh, you know, the happiness hypothesis, the science of happiness, fulfillment, because you need those four things. These are the only four you really need. You get these four right, and of course they're pretty broad, but they're not as broad as you think. Uh, then you can add in other books, but 150 books. Now, there's good precedent for this among amazing people doing big things. I found it interesting in this book about Jeff Bezos and how he built Amazon that he would walk around with a tattered copy of Sam Walton's book, Made in America. He had a notepad and written it all up and read it over and over to the point where, what did we say about Dalai Lama? That it became instinctual. The business characteristics that had helped Sam Walton build Walmart and build a personal net worth of $160 billion, $160,000 million Sam Walton had, that Jeff Bezos was humble enough to get a $5 book, his autobiography or Sam Walton's autobiography, and read it over and over. There is a clear precedent for that. I've read the Will Durant books over and over since I was about, I think, 16 or so years old. So for you, the lesson, what I'm talking about now in the next component in smart reading, it's not just volume. It's repetitive reading. And the way to think about it, or the way I think about it is, <clears throat> what would you rather have? A life where you have 150 friends, business partners, acquaintances, allies, personal trainers, uh, right? And you go deep with them. Like, you know, you've invested in their life and they've invested in yours. And I just had a friend have a heart attack and I saw his Facebook wall, you know, people following up and caring about him. And I know that makes them feel good and helps them recover. So for you, the same relationship must be created with books. We talked about in, earlier in the other component, FOMO, fear of missing out. If you have the mindset that you're going to just read a book once and then put it on the, you know, give it to someone else or never pick it up again, then yes, fear of missing out by doing the smart reading techniques that I've been teaching uh, will be an issue because you'll go, well, I missed the, you know, I'm reading the, what's this? Well, The Way to Wealth by Benjamin Franklin. I only got one golden nugget and then I put it down and I, what about all the other 10 nuggets? But... Think about your friend. You meet somebody for the first time. You see, you have a spark of, of, of you know, commonality. You see them at, man, this is somebody I like. Think how you do it then. You know, one of my best friends I ever met, Herman. Uh, I met him in North Carolina. We were at a party with a mutual friend, Begonia Caballero. I remember her name. And it was her birthday party. And we met and we, they were playing board games or something at this party. And me and Herman ended up on the same team. And we started winning because we both, I forget what the game was. We were both good at it. And it was like, ah, this guy reminds me of myself. So then I remember being in the kitchen and we were talking a little bit. And then I don't even think I got his phone number or followed up. But we were just like, hey, it was good to meet you. And I left. A couple months later, I was uh, trying to get in the nightclub business. And I was at this salsa club. I forget the name of it. And he walked in. And I walked up to him and we, I said, hey, man, you're a guy from the birthday. Yeah, yeah. So we slowly built a friendship. The first time I met him at Begonia's house, I didn't bombard and go, give me every piece of nugget that you ever have. What's your name? You know, this is a smart guy. He's got a PhD, one of the top neurobiologists in the world, neuroscientist, published in, you know, Cell Magazine, all this big nature, all that kind of stuff. But for him, it was a process over time. So I want you to think of these very important books, these 150 books, as allies and friends that you will build a long-term relationship. You will go deep, not shallow. And in doing that, you don't have to worry about FOMO. When I met Herman the first time, I didn't have to go, oh, I gotta get every piece of info because I'll never see him again. No. 
over time, you get to know them better and better and better and better again. Alexander the Great conquered the world. He had his library of books and they didn't have ease of access to books. And he was personally mentored from 14 to 16 and a half when he was a teenager by Aristotle. And he kept Aristotle's books. Of course, he had them in person. But he listened to them over and over and over. And that's again, going back to what the Dalai Lama said, that allows you to have level three. These things then become instinctual. You don't want to be just book smart. You want to have your instincts change so that when life comes and it's hard, your snap decisions in business, about your health, about trusting somebody or not trusting another person in a social setting, when you feel depressed that you want to know how to deal with these in the moment, you will have developed skill by, I'm sorry, you have developed instinctual skill by having put in the time step by step, slowly over time. So what I want you to do here to, we got more we're talking about, we're just getting going here. Okay. Below this to close this video out and unlock the next one in this smart reading system. Uh, and we're going to talk more about some real how to stuff routines and things. I want you to put a video uh, in the comment below here. I want you to answer uh, what are some of the books. Now, like I said, you can use my 150 to get you started. What are some books you think should be on your top 150? List five or 10 because remember, my list is not set in stone. You can make your own. You'll have different tastes and different needs than I have. So make a dynamic list. What's your 150 now, you don't need to write all 150, but write out the top five or 10 that you're going to go deep with from today till the day you leave this earth. What are those ones you want to commit a real friendship with? So like Jeff Bezos, their knowledge, experience, and wisdom becomes instinctual for you. All right. Put that below. Answer that. And the second question, very interesting, Warren Buffett says, every time you add something to a list, you got to subtract one. What are examples of some books? And I'll give you my in a second. Some books that did not help you get the good life that you need to subtract from your list. You need to give away to the library or give to somebody else. I'll tell you mine from experiments, Stephen King books. Now that's not to disparage the quality of his writing for you. Your list might be different, but it gave, I always have weird dreams when I read Stephen King. And I wake up and I don't feel refreshed because I was tossing and turning. I'm not, they're not like scary dreams. I just have bizarre dreams. So my list, so put a list of some books on your bookshelf that you don't want to invest in for the long term that need to be removed. Okay. So answer those two and we will, I will see you on the next video. Remember answering those will unlock the next ones. All right. Welcome to the next component here of this smart reading system so that you can not just be the most well-read person in the room, not just the smartest, but instincts honed so that you get actual big benefits, not just bragging rights. Life's not about bragging. It's not about the people who talk. It's about the people who do. So how can this help you do stuff? So remember, the books are not mutually exclusive with doing only for people that misunderstand books purpose. So the next component is you need a routine. Okay. I'm, I'm going to get to here coming up in videos on specifics on how to read, but I'm setting up the philosophy philosophy always comes before technique or else I told that story of the plane that crashed. Uh, in the, in the rainforest in South America, people got out. I don't know if it's a true story or not, but they get out. 90% of people in plane get machetes and they start chopping their way through the jungle to the rainforest to get to a village to find help. So these people, there's some engineers, they sharp, they would better sharpen the, the, um, machete and they sharpen and they go through and they're cutting their way through. And all of a sudden one guy smart enough to climb up a tree and look at the big picture philosophy and direction of the business. And guess what? He says, Hey guys, all you guys cutting machete, uh, cutting a path, you're cutting it the wrong way. The village isn't this way. It's that way. Now all the ones on the ground got mad because they're like, Oh, they were getting, they were just good at technique. Ooh, we're cutting at 45 degree angles perfectly. I know how to sharpen this, but philosophy must come first. You must chop in the right direction. So 
the next philosophy, the next component here is the routine. Now, the routine and the type of books that you should read. We talked about your 150, we talked about gold mining, reading with intention, the Dalai Lama's principle of you know making it instinctual, making deep friendships, quote unquote, alliances with key books in the four areas, health, wealth, love, and happiness, 30 or 40 in each category, mostly nonfiction, but some key fiction in there is no problem. Uh, I like Steinbeck, I like, um, uh, I like, I was reading Homer, obviously. I like All Quiet on the Western Front, Remark. These are non, these are fiction books. Nothing wrong with fiction, but it's a tool. Don't overuse the tool. Coffee may be good at one glass, but 10 glasses of it's gonna cause you problems. So same with books. Generally, I like nonfiction. Um, so once you have all that, now we need the routine and a little more specifics on the type of books. So most people just categorize books in two ways. So the next component is the types of books. And I mean a little different than what we talked about before. Most people think of books as just fiction or nonfiction or just categories like health book, wealth book. What I wanna now talk about is subtypes. I believe there's about three types of books that you need to read continually. There's the classics, okay, A, there's classics. Classics are books that have stood the test of time that are at least 50 years old and highly respected. I love if they're more than 100 years old. Why? Well, it's not a guarantee that they're trustworthy because remember, it's like anything in life. Who do you listen to? People get confused with reading because they listen to the wrong people. Who do you listen to? That's a big part of your life. So uh, when it comes to uh, books, you want to listen at least to some classics because even though the masses are not always right, there's a good book, you know, The Folly of Crowds, but there's another good book which shows the science. There is a wisdom in crowds, a book that's lasted hundreds or thousands of years probably has value for you or else it would be forgotten, right? Any classic book, let's just name some. The Bible, the Quran, the, the works of Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates, the writings of Descartes, the writings of uh, uh, some of the great religious founders, Thomas Aquinas and I think the 1300s, the works of newer people like Darwin and Freud, uh, Karl Marx, even though you may disagree, always read disagreeing opinions. They're sharp people, right? Going back 40, 50 years, Peter Drucker business books. These are books, uh, winning friends and influencing people. So books that have stood the test of time, both in the amount of years they've been out and the amount of people that have read them. I call these classics. Now there's some on the, you know, there's some instant modern classics, maybe the seven habits of highly effective people or one of Tony Robbins books. Maybe you put those in classics, but I, I tend to say books that are more than 50 years old. So when you're getting your books in health, wealth, love, and happiness, you want some of in health that are classic health books. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger's got a classic, it's not 50 years old, but it's a pretty classic book on health. Wealth, a classic book, like I said, uh, books by Benjamin Graham in the early what, 1920s, 30s, 40s on, on the understanding stock market. That's a classic. Books on love or social, maybe a book by Freud has some fascinating things on how humans interact and books on happiness, uh, the great philosophers, okay? So Aristotle, Socrates, Plato, the Seneca, uh, Nietzsche, although he may not be on happiness, right? But he give, there's a lot of insight there. So in love and happiness, each of these, you need some classic books. Okay, secondly, B, you need some pure how-to books. Those are books that just lay it out, okay? They could be modern or they could be classic. Those are books like, oh, what's a good how-to one that I have here? Well, I consider this one a, <clears throat> a how-to, working together. It's, you know, how to have partnerships in business, how and why you need partnerships. That's a how-to book. Uh, 
The Practice of Management by Peter Drucker. Pretty how-to, how to manage a company if you have a company or if you're an employee, a supervisor. So in health, you need some how-to ones. How to lift weights. Oh, in health, a classic one that's good is the story of uh, Dr. Weston Price or the Hunzas. There's lots of cool classic, but for how to in health, you know, maybe you read Fit for Life or something like that. Uh, that's a, a, a very how to one. A, good, a really good how to health book is the story of the human body by Lieberman. Great book. Uh, what else is a great health? This diet cults one I read recently is fascinating about why we get addicted and misled by diets. That's a how-to one. You walk away with it with a real skill. So the goal of how-to books are you literally can walk away. Classic books give you big picture philosophy. These how-to books, you walk away with something tangible. Okay, I learned, you know. A how-to book can be a for dummies book on languages. Or maybe you want to learn chess. Or maybe you want to learn computer programming. Those would all be how-to. Lastly, the C, biographies. Biographies. Humans learn by osmosis. They don't learn audio, visual, or kinesthetic. That's wrong, in my opinion. It's by osmosis. So can, there is truth that obviously audio, visual, and kinesthetic by doing is important, but that's summed up in the word osmosis by being around other humans that are ahead of you. The principle of law of 33% that I talked about in my TED talk. The principle of mentorship comes from day-to-day -day interaction. Now, there's many great people that you and I cannot be around because they are no longer with us. They're dead for years, decades, or centuries. And so those people, we can only get to. They were not around for videos or YouTube. They're only there through books. That's your best bet. So biographies of living recently dead and ancient people is a great way to build one of the most important things you'll need in life, which is courage. Courage to rise above the risks to get the reward. The two strongest cognitive biases in your brain that will mislead you, cause you to make mistakes, or cause you to do great things are the control with, that you have over reward bias and risk, uh, I'm sorry, and uh, reward and uh, pain, those two. And you overcome reward and pain. Now, I put risk in that category. Maybe you're afraid of doing something new. That's all under the pain. Freud talked about this in a classic book, Civilization is Discontents, where he said, you know, he said, someone asked him the purpose of life. He said, that's too hard of a question. But I can tell you what the behavior of humans reveal as to their primary intentions and motivations. And he said, people move towards intense pleasure and move away from pain and discomfort. So the way to get those two, you will need courage to overcome fear of pain and to uh, be able to focus on the goal. You wanna start a business, you wanna lose 20 pounds, you wanna find love, it's gonna take courage and biographies. In my opinion and my experience and the experience of many people are one of the foundational ways that you do that. You know, Conrad Hilton, I don't, I have his book here somewhere. He's the great grandfather of, uh, Paris Hilton, he built the Hilton Hotel chain. He says there was a day where everything changed for him. He was 15 years old and he bumped into a book about Helen Keller, a biography about her, how she overcame through optimism the hurdles that she had with all her disabilities, not being able to see, hear, talk, interact with people. And that, he said, was the day where I learned about optimism. And that is what he said turned him into one of the great real estate billionaires and, and influential people of all time. And so that's the pattern over and over and over again as you read people where they bumped into a person, but if the person was dead, they bumped into a book. And that book propelled them forward and gave them the courage to know someone's done it before. And the flip side, you know, I, I post, I don't know if you're on my Twitter, I post some daily summaries. And one of the ones that I posted was, you know, It's not as scary to do something, to fail, when you know other people have failed. Now, not that your goal is to fail, but you will have more courage to go, well, that person went through that and they seem to survive. That person started a business and went bankrupt. Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, made more money than anybody basically ever in modern business. His first business after two or three years, he lost his business because he didn't read the lease correctly and the business 
was taken over by the landlord. And uh, he seemed to have done okay. That comes through reading the autobiography of Sam Walton. So if you're petrified of having failure, you go, well, I don't need to worry so much because even if my business shuts down, there can be a great end result for me in the long run. So biographies. Now, uh, I'm going to, we're going to end, I'm going to talk about this because this is kind of a long one. I've got a next video coming up is how to implement that routine. You need a set routine about those three books. So we're going to unlock the next video, very important one. I want you to answer a few questions, okay? What is the greatest classic book that you've ever read or heard about that you want to have in your library? For me, the greatest classic is the Will Durant series, The Story of Civilization. What's yours? It's a book, stood the test of time, should be at least ideally 50 years older or older more, and many people have read it and liked it, obviously. Uh, the second thing is, what is an example of a book that is a um, uh, how-to book, the best how-to book. I'll tell you mine, it's Peter Bevelin's book, uh, A Few Lessons for Managers and Investors or something. A Few Lessons for Managers and Investors, I think. It's, it's a how-to short book. It's the best book I've ever read on understanding money. That's the best how-to book for me. What is yours? Put that below this video in order to unlock the next video. Third. And lastly, what is the best biography that has instilled courage in you to overcome the risks and the potential pain to get the rewards that you've wanted in health, wealth, love, and happiness in your life? What is the big one? For me, uh, in terms of biographies, there's many, and it changes over time. Recently, uh, one of the great biographies I've read is Kuntiki. And that's, you'll see on my list, it's the story of Tor Heyerdahl, the Norwegian explorer who had the courage to float on a raft across the Pacific Ocean. If I've been on the Pacific Ocean in a big boat. It's a very scary ocean and he went across in a raft. And I realized if that man could do that and his team, then probably everything I do that quote unquote takes courage pales in comparison. There's many biographies. So answer that. Then I've got a very important thing on how to begin now as we get through the philosophy to actually implement the smart reading technique that's going to revolutionize your life. Trust me, books have tremendous power, not because they're books, but because the more you learn, the more you earn, not just financially, but in every other area of your life. So answer these three things and I'll see you in a second on the next video. All right. So we've laid the foundation. We've got philosophy. Now let's get to some how to stuff. So practical stuff on reading. Now we talked about the type of books. We talked about the 150, the gold nugget, the focused reading, all that stuff, the Dalai Lama's principle. Now, how do you do it? And I'll tie enough of that philosophy. Tell me how to do it. Here's how I want you to set up your life. Get a timer. Now you can start with 15 minutes, three times a day but that might be too much for you. So I'd rather you do less. So figure up how many minutes a day you can realistically devote to reading, just like working out or playing basketball or sports or whatever you do or jogging, whatever you do to keep physically healthy. We want the mind healthy, okay? So what is the first, uh, I'm sorry, what is the time you can devote? So let's say it's 15 minutes a day. For me, it's 45 minutes, okay? So I divide it by three and I get 15 minute chunks that I'm gonna read in. For you, I'd rather you commit to six minutes a day and stick to it, okay? Six divided by three is two minute intervals. So you're gonna just divide it morning, afternoon, night. That's it. So if you devoted six minutes a day to reading, Divided by three, that's two minutes in the morning during breakfast. I always like to do it during meals or close to meals. You don't have to. Two minutes in the afternoon and two minutes at night. Six minutes, okay? For me, it's 45 minutes a day, so I do 15 at breakfast, 15 in the afternoon, and 15 before I fall asleep. 
So the way you do it, what I like to do, and I recommend to start with my way, you can tweak it as you find what works for you. In the morning, I call it the soap of the brain. The soap of the brain, you're gonna be cleansed from all the consumerism that's in the world. The average uh, human, you and I see oh, at least 2,000 advertisements a day. People trying to get us to be the sucker and buy their stuff. It's too much. So the classics in the morning, you read a great work by somebody who stood the test of time before we were in a modern commercial consumerist world. So this morning I read Homer. The day before I read uh, Gogol. He wrote uh, The Overcoat. He's a Russian writer. I read Poincaré, The Mathematician. I read Freud. I, there's some good books. There's a, some classic series, little volume sets you can get. I've got a few different ones, the Yale classics. There's a couple different ones. But there where you're at breakfast, you set your timer. If you have an iPhone or an Android or something, if you set devoted to six minutes a day, then you set it to two minutes. You grab one of your classic books, whichever one's on your bookshelf. Hopefully you're ordering them from Amazon or wherever. You get the book and you go, you know what? I got two minutes. My goal today is I'm feeling a little depressed. I need some happiness. You scan the book with intention. Now, sometimes the book won't have it. If you're looking for happiness, you may not want to read Dostoevsky or one of the more depressing writers. So you pick your classic book and you go, I need soap for my brain. Just like you take a shower in the morning if you've been out or at the end of the night because you're dirty, you need to cleanse the mind. And the best way, set that timer, whatever it is, your interval, two minutes, boom. 60 seconds, done. It's kind of like doing one couple, one set of exercise. So I like to do classics. This morning I did 15 minutes. I read uh, Homer, Odyssey. Then lunchtime. Now what I like to do if you take a nap, which is one of the greatest things you can do for your health, Ben Greenfield, the best-selling author, uh, Beyond Endurance, he uh, and a friend mentor to me on health. I help him with business, he helps me with health. And uh, he says, my biggest mistake I made was not napping enough. He was a top athlete or is a top Ironman type athlete. So you can incorporate, you can get a win-win Pareto efficiency symbiotic experience by taking a book. When you're done eating, you'll be a little tired at lunch. Even I was in Germany, one of the top business guys there with him, Norman, and he has a little nap room in his office. And I took a nap. It was great. So grab your book and in the afternoon when your brain is kind of, you know, you're in the full of the day, I read my how-to book. So the, uh, I was, I'm reading, uh, where's the one? I'm reading the winning book by uh, this guy, Jack Welch. So that was my 15 minute how-to book. I was with focus, I was focused on just some management tips, managing people. I've got a lot of people I'm hiring for different companies I own. So. That was the takeaway, okay? That's lunch. And a lot of times, it will help you take a nap. So if you're gonna do the nap thing, what I do for me is whatever my reading interval is, I add uh, 20 minutes to it because it takes me five minutes to fall asleep and I like if I sleep longer than 15 minutes, I feel groggy. So if I've set myself for 15 minutes of reading, then I'll set my timer, I'll, I'll have 20 minutes plus my reading interval. So that's 35 minutes. 20 plus 15, 35. If your reading interval is just two minutes, then you could set your timer to 22 minutes. It gives you two minutes to read, five minutes to fall asleep without pressure, and then your sleep, so I don't always fall asleep exactly, but I've found if I sleep five to 15 minutes, I feel very alive. So, and I got my how-to in, okay? You can do it at work, you can do it wherever. Get in that habit. I was reading uh, Hillary Clinton's book, talking about top executives, you know, presidential level people, and she, and they're like, you gotta learn to nap. Uh, well, one of the great basketball players, I think Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he advised Magic Johnson, you better learn to nap in this business, you're gonna die. So you wanna do big things, use this symbiotic napping slash how-to. Thirdly, and lastly, at the end of each day, I believe the best way to fall asleep is reading. In the story of the human body, Lieberman, the Harvard professor also talks about how just laying in complete quiet is a reason he believes a lot of people can't sleep well because he said our brain's not adapted over generations and thousands of years to, to work that way. 
So a little bit of distraction, and I have no problem sleeping. I've always read, and I believe you should read a biography at night. So you notice, if you choose to adopt my way, you're gonna have three books open at any one time. Now remember, it doesn't have to be new ones. You can do this, the same three books for the whole week if you want. Generally, the classic book, I will rotate a new one every day. The how-to one, I might, because in 15 minutes, I might not finish it. The biographies, okay, at night, I tend to read the least speed reading, okay? So uh, I'll talk about that. I'm gonna talk about that now. So this is the routine. Next video, I'm gonna talk about how to read different books differently, okay? It's a very common question, the smart technique. You can't read all books. You can't speed read an autobiography or a classic book in the same way you might read a quick how-to book. So this is the routine that I want you to think about. I want you to just try it as an experiment, try my way, tweak it to suit your needs best. So, below this video, I would like you to put just three, uh, I would like you to answer this first question. How many minutes are you gonna budget over the next, remember the best habit forming is 67 days. So over the next 67 days, what reading habit are you going to implement? For some of you, hopefully all of you are in the 67 Steps program. If you're not, it's above. Uh, it's about how to rewire your brain for success, one video a day for 67 days, but you can, alongside it, set a certain amount of minutes. I recommend at least six minutes a day, at a very minimum, and for now, I suggest no more than 45 minutes because it's like lifting weights. If you start bench pressing 200 pounds, you're gonna pull a muscle, hurt yourself, get discouraged, and never do it again. So. If you set six minutes, then that'd be three intervals at two minutes each. If you're gonna do 30 minutes, three 10 minute intervals. 18 minutes, three six minutes. Keep it, if you've gotta err on the side, it's better to do less reading, more consistent, because over the next 67 days, you'll literally change the neural pathways. Dr. Sean Mullen talks about an inheritance. You'll literally rewire, rewire, uh, rewire your DNA, in, not literally, but you'll, your DNA will activate, or your genes are dynamic, new catalysts, enzymes will be activated that change your patterns. That's what we wanna do in 67 days. So pick a low number. So what's your number? Three intervals of how many minutes? Okay, the second question is, are you gonna try the nap technique? Okay, and how many, if so, second question is, how many minutes does it take you to fall asleep on average? Because you gotta add the reading time to that. So if it takes you 10 minutes to fall asleep, then I recommend you set your timer to 25 minutes plus your reading interval. So I believe a 15 minute power nap I've read is a very powerful one to start with. You can tweak it. So I, I, if I sleep 30 minutes, I feel groggy. So for me, it's like five to 25 minutes and I average that to 15. What's your amount of time you wanna sleep? How many minutes it takes you to fall asleep? And then add the interval and that's what you need to set your timer to at lunchtime. At night time, do you have troubles? This is the third question now, comment. Remember, you gotta answer these to unlock the next video. What is your biggest problem sleeping? Okay, and do you think reading a biography at night will help you? Let me just add, the biography at night should be not too like scary or something. Ideally, it can be even teeniest bit boring will help you sleep. Remember, books can help you set routines also. So, unlock this, and I got one more, I got a couple more videos for you. We're gonna get to a powerful one on how to read different books smart. Different types of books must be read differently. Let's get some more technique going, all right? See you on the next video. All right, welcome to the next video. In this one, we are going to talk about a little more technique. We've gone through lots of stuff, some philosophy. We've hit on the routines and the timing intervals and the three times a day and the types of book. Now let's talk about the common question that I get. Ty, do you read, you know, Shakespeare with speed reading? Do you read biographies fast? Do you read how to? Okay, so here's the basic rule. Remember we talked about three types of books, classic, uh, how to, and uh, biographies, okay. Here's the order of speed which with, with which you should try to read. The fastest would be the how-to books. The classic books, a little bit slower, and the biographies, you read the slowest. Why? 
How-to books generally, now this is a really good one, but a lot of how-to books only have one or two relevant points for you. The rest is fluff. <laughs> the publisher is not gonna accept a book from an author with 10 pages, right? Even if they only have 10 good pages of information. So they gotta put, you know, they have to just say lots of stuff and stories and da 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 and da 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 to fill up the pages so they can sell you the book for 20 or 30 bucks. But at the if you whittle the book down, a lot of it's just anecdotal stories backing up the central thesis of the book. So in a how-to book, you just need to figure out the central thesis and just the part of the central thesis relevant to you. The rest, you know they're only going to put in stories that back up their own central thesis. So it's not like you're reading a debate type paper where maybe you're going to get new information. No, the information is going to back the central thesis. So that one you read the fastest. When I'm reading, in the next video, I'm going to show you some actual techniques on how to read real fast. So, you know, when I read this book, I can read this one fast. It's pretty big type. It's a how-to book. Mostly it's 350 pages. I mean, this one I might be able to knock out in five to 25 minutes, depending on how focused I am. I'll show you how in the next coming up. So, uh, the how-to books I read pretty darn fast. I read them when I'm lunch, falling asleep. It works out pretty well. Classics, I read the next because depending on the classics, like I was reading Homer, sometimes I can read that pretty fast, especially if it's in a version where the English is a little more plain. Shakespeare, a little bit slower, obviously. Darwin and Freud sometimes have spoke very clearly. I find some of those great classic people to be very clear. Obviously, some philosophers, if you're reading Wittgenstein or some of these, you know, guys where you're blown away by the complexity. What's the one guy that's so complicated? Oh, I forget. There's one philosopher, a German philosopher that's, oh, Heidegger. Those kind of guys, obviously, you're just happy to understand one sentence. But for the most part, classics are read at a moderate pace. So what I generally look for is just reading one section of them. If I only have 15 minutes to read, I'm just going to read one section of that classic work, okay? Uh, but you can generally, a good bit of them, you can move along nicely. Lastly, the biographies. The reason that I don't want to read biographies too fast is multiple reasons. Remember I said the first video, you got to have the, or, or, you know, the first step here. You have to have a uh, end game to every action that you take because you know some of you I hope are in my uh, the 67 steps and some of you are in the more advanced business thing where it's called my uh, you know investor entrepreneur mini MBA program it's for people trying to grow a business become an entrepreneur you know get a million dollar business make six figures make financial independence and there uh, I talk about that you have to be an investor and so investors always have what Stephen Covey in The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People talks about, the end in mind. As Seneca, the philosopher said, the worst thing in life is having a goal and getting it and realizing you didn't want it. Joel Salatin used to say, Todd, the worst thing is getting good at the wrong thing. So when you read an autobiography with the goal of speed reading it, forgetting that the goal of this, the biography is to give you courage through a human story that you can relate to, well, then you, you're doing it all wrong. But once you know your end game goal for a biography is that you intimately being able to almost project yourself into their life, then you want to read it. Then you want to stop and smell the roses and read the descriptions where they talk about, you know, their mom and walking down the street and the flowers. That is the book you read the slowest. And also, since we said the symbiotic end game goal is to fall asleep, you don't want to be too intense late at night reading and, you know, intensely going. It's too much. And you will, both of the end game goals will go down the tube. Okay? So I think it's very important that you set realistic goals for your reading. Um, you are not going to speed read. Uh, oh, yeah, let me add. You're not going to speed read a biography, but the next component is 
some people ask me the complexity of books. So there's an element of complexity that has to be factored in. In 15 minutes, you will not read Schopenhauer, Heidegger, or uh, Karl Marx, or Descartes. You're just not going to. So there you just, you got the same amount of, it's kind of like money. If you go to Beverly Hills and you have a hundred dollar bill, you just know you're not going to get as many clothes, <laughs> but you might get one really, really nice thing on Rodeo Drive. You know, you go there to Rodeo, it's expensive, but you get stuff of value. So these books that are a little deeper, a little more meat, a little more complexity to them, you will not get through the volume, but it's made up. If you're reading the right book, it's made up with density of knowledge. Does that make sense? So very important that you look at the ratio and the re the only reason you can read this so fast is because the density isn't always there in how to books. So the, if you notice what ends up happening, if you were doing the math, if you're an engineer is that you're getting the same wisdom, knowledge, experience, insight from 15 minutes reading a classic book where you only get through one page as you do if you were reading much more faster, uh, much more quickly in like a speed reading pace, which we're going to talk about. Uh, if you were reading in a speed reading pace of a how-to book that's less dense, you can only take away so much. Your brain has a certain pace to it. It has a certain amount of muscle and it will take you a while to build up to be able to imbibe and suck in vast quantities of complex subjects too quickly. So at the end game, the pace, the parity is pretty much there. You're taking in only about, you know, a spoonful. When you're going to first start this, you're going to be like a baby. You're like, it's like a straw, right? It's like a pacifier. It's like a little, one of those sippy cups. Then you get a little older, you'll be able to take in more complex food, more, you know, meat. And then as you go older and stronger, you'll be able to take it more. Don't be afraid to vary the pace for the type of books. So now I'm going to next one. I'm going to show you here in a second. Uh, I'm gonna actually read a book with you. Okay. So, and I, I, you might've seen me do this before, but I want to do it a little more, I'll show you a little bit more. So to close out this video, unlock the next one. I want you to answer this question. Okay. What's an example of a book? that you tried to speed read that was too dense where you ended up not taking anything away. Some more. Number two question. What is an example of a book that you read much too slowly that only had one nugget, the density wasn't there, but you mismatched how long you read it for. You should have read it for, you know, an hour and you read it over a week. All right. And, and thirdly, Okay. Uh, what is a specific book that you're going to set a pace for right now? So pick a book that's on your mind to read and how much you're going to allocate. Get good at beginning or, or begin building the skill of estimation. I like to estimate when I get a book. Ah, this book, I'm going to spend about 30 minutes. So estimate a book. That's the third question below this video and that'll unlock the next one. So I'm going to see you on the next one. We're going to talk about actual techniques to go through a book. All right, some techniques, some of the stuff everybody likes. Let's pick a book, pick one. I don't know which one, maybe I'll pick one of these. Just happen, whatever I have around me. All right, Jack Welch, self-help category, nonfiction, a book I'd read in the afternoon. How do we get through this bad boy? Well, a couple things, some technique things. First of all, preparation. I like to have a bookmark and I like to have a pen, okay? A bookmark and pen. Why? Well, I like to just circle stuff. Now, this is a paper towel that I happen, or a napkin that I happen to be using. I use anything I can. I should have some more formal one. And for, a, I've tried highlighters and stuff, but I've just kind of stuck with just pen. And all I do, it's a little hard to see here, but I just uh, circle it, good points. That's it. 
I used to write in the back of the book. You can do that if you want, but I found just circling, because then if you want to look back at the notes, you just flip through the book and you can see if you use a bright black ink, you know, it's relatively helpful. So, uh, with this book, I'm trying to think how I want to do this, because I don't want it to be too boring. Look, let me actually start. I'm going to make this the first video. The intro? Yeah. Okay, so it's going to combine with the intro and then this one, or is this... No, no, I'm going to make this the first one. Okay. Let me think how I want to do this, because I realize I kind of did it out of order. No, I'll, I'll keep going. This will be the last one. I'm going to, in the first one, I'm going to put some of the highlights of what they're going to get in the other ones. Okay, in case so they, because a lot of people don't watch all the videos. So if you put all the good stuff at the end, 90% right. of people never see it. So we'll go back to this. Okay. All right. All right, this is the last video, the sixth one. And we'll record them. All right, so I want to go a little more in depth. You saw me do this in the beginning, but I'm going to do a little bit more. Take this book. Let's just get in a little more nitty gritty and review in case you forgot. So some practicalities of smart slash speed slash whatever reading words you want to use. Getting a lot of knowledge faster than you've ever done before. Not just knowledge, but end game results. Instinctual changes in your life. Big rewards. So, like I said, elements you need, bookmark. I like, I here have whatever was in front of me, which was a paper towel or napkin. You need just a black and white pen. You can see that I put my little notes right there, okay? I just circle it, that's all I do. And if it's a really good circle, I'll write next to it right here, I'll write some words, like just key reminder words. They don't make sense to anyone else, they make sense to me. Once in a while, if it's amazing stuff, Joel Salatin taught me this, I'll write it in the uh, last page or the first page, blank page of the book. Like the top three things in the whole book. That way I can come back to it later. Sometimes now I will add it on my iPhone in iBooks. I'll download, I'll buy the book if it's especially good, and I'll also download it so it's easy to highlight and uh, email myself the notes. A little bonus tip here that I began to do over the last years. That's awesome. So the preparation to read is the book, a bookmark, a pen, a place to sit or lay down is even better. Sitting's not that good for you, even though I'm sitting right now. Put your feet up, lay back. That's better position to, to, for the human body, they say. And sometimes I'll have my iBook notes there with the book that I bought. So that costs a little more because I buy the book twice, but sometimes if it's, it's good investment in myself. So, technique, as we talked about before, quick review. You start out, how? Table of contents, that's my starting point. Every day there's a new question. So how much about hot air about something or the biggest dirty secret, cool and Darwinian. Every brain in the game, it's not about you. The questions that almost got away, it's divided into your company, your competition, your career underneath it all, okay? Then I will move to the jacket. Now, the reason I don't always start with the jacket because not all the books I have I buy them used. Sometimes I don't have a jacket, but I, I wanna know who I'm reading. I read, I actually read the little things in the back, you know, the quotes, Tom Brokaw, I quote. I love to read, usually the back jacket, I read that too, because that gives you the, why I should respect this person. Jack Welch, Susie Welch, she went to Harvard, okay, blah, 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 all this good stuff. All right, so then I've read that, so I've done a couple passes already through the book. The next thing, is the next pass. How do I do that? Well, if I define my end game goal, which for this book was management techniques, I've read why I should trust this guy, how he built Jack Welch, to an increased market capitalization of basically half a trillion dollars. I got respect for the guy. My brain can let down its guard a little. I've read the table of con contents. I've got a technique that I love that I'm gonna show you. I go to the introduction, if there is no introduction, the first chapter. Inevitably, the introduction and the first chapter are almost always the best parts of the book and the last chapter. 
So if you notice, I do my little background round, so it's passes, multiple passes through the book. The first pass is the table of contents and the second pass is the cover and the bio. The third pass is the introduction. The next pass is the first chapter and then I go to the last chapter. And you'd be amazed with that smart technique, how much you've learned. Now, after you've done that, Depending on the quality of books, remember, you're not trying to make friends with everybody, but if this book should be in your top book category, then you move to the next area, which is what? That is where you identify keep, keep chapters in the book that you missed on purpose. You didn't miss them on accident. And that last one or two passes are on those things. So in this book, as I was reading this, I know why I should study this book, Management, Groove. There was an interesting thing that caught my eye. He has this, uh, a, a section called your competition. Well, I'm in a business. Competition is something we want to be good at, at dealing with. So there's page 165 to 245. So I know there's about 80 pages on that subject. So uh, what do I do? Well, I don't want to read 80 necessarily but I um, remember your your interval of reading we talked about so if I got a two minute interval I know I'm not gonna read 80 pages if I still have 15 minutes left or maybe that's taking me five minutes to read the introduction the back uh, in the table of contents and the introduction first chapter last chapter maybe that's taking half my time or 10 minutes so I know I have five minutes left I'll budget and I'll go well let's knock out this chapter on budgeting that's something I'm never been the best at in business budgeting so I go to page 189 and I'm like there I go I just read that chapter normal you can read it's only 189 it's only five pages or six pages so now I don't have to speed read budgeting reinventing the ritual not to beat around the bush but the budgeting process has to be the most effective not that hard right now we talked a little bit about this before so let's go a little more advanced how am I actually reading? How are my eyes moving? So I tend to be a little more normal than you would think. I tend to read from the top to the bottom, the left to right. I don't totally read out of order, but like Jeff Bezos talks about in, in everything store about him, I do not always follow that pattern. There are plenty of times, about 30% of the time where I read just boom, out of order and then my brain uh, over time has gotten used to this and yours will too of being able to piece it together so in general I'm reading in order but not always I if a book is like this per se and has like little bullets here and uh, where's the other one here then I always read those first leaders celebrate and then he wrote work is too much a part of life not to recognize so I, I'm like okay Celebration, huge. Hierarchies tend to make little generals out of perfectly normal people. So I piece together. And now the reason, so as you're moving out of order sometimes, realize it's going to tax your brain. And the reason I told you at the beginning that I'm not as big of a fan of speed reading is there is a certain, uh, only a certain amount of information you can cog cognitively imbibe at once take in, drink of, partake of, because your brain gets tired. So that's why I tend to read in the natural order because if you begin to read out of order, even though there's some speed advantages, you're actually burning through the fuel in your mental gas tank a bit faster. That's why I said I don't recommend that any weird techniques any super out of the ordinary, you know, there's techniques of only reading the first word of each paragraph and the first sentence. And I do those at times, especially if a book is not very dense and I didn't really need to get to it. But I avoid those somewhat because I found then I get too tired to remember what I read. Now, I'm not going to talk about it in this one, but I've got a special thing on memory. So depending on if you have access to that, uh, you'll be able to see memory techniques on reading. So I cover that in a slightly, because there's a lot of stuff about memory on, because so, I get that asked a lot. How do you remember what you wrote? 
What we're talking about in this little mini class that you're in, in these lessons, is the specifics on reading. If you do this right, let me say, the recall, you've done 80% of the recall battle because you're not trying to take in too much, you're reading with focus, you're reading with intention. Uh, when you read and don't tax your brain too much by reading in crazy patterns, you know, some speed readings are like, oh, you just read with your fingers like this. And I've done that, but I've found you still can only take in a certain amount of knowledge. So your memory will go up in the way that we're talking about now. So to review, just to make this clear, you make multiple passes through the books, focusing multiple passes. You focus on those things that people often overlook, which is the table of contents, which gives you the map, and the jacket, which often gives you the authority to release your brain to go, this is a trustworthy source, because you read about the author and you read praise for the book. Now, assuming that it's not a, you know, they're not tricking you, but this book, you know, they don't have reviews from people that I don't respect, but this guy has Jack Welch, Bill Gates, I'm, I'm sorry, he has Tom Brokaw, Warren Buffett, Giuliani, Bill Gates, Fortune Magazine, Business Week. So that literally is an important step to get that authority, or should I say permission, from your brain and give it to the author. That helps you. Then I get to that introduction and first chapter, and then I get to that last chapter. Then the sixth step is I come back and I isolate, depending on how much time I have left, I isolate one or two chapters I'm gonna focus on. And then lastly, if I still have more time to go, I'll kind of find a place uh, to start, maybe back in the beginning, or maybe I'll go to the next chapter. So those are seven kind of components. There's no exact science. You're gonna refine this a little bit your way, a little bit that way. You're gonna be a little bit wanting to be like, no, Ty, I don't wanna do all that. I don't don't get rid of all seven of these. You might skip one of these steps. Maybe you don't want to read, you know, just the first and the last, or maybe you want to skip the table of contents. I recommend for now, try all seven of those angles to the book. For now, try not to go crazy and do weird techniques and little, you know, people have special devices and apps and eye training things. And that's all good, but remember, you're not, this guy has, 50, 40, 50 years of business knowledge. I'm not realistically gonna get it in one 15 minute interval. Although, the more you lift weights, the stronger you'll be with your body. And in the same way, the more you do, the more you'll be able to absorb. You'll be surprised doing this for the next 67 days. At the end of the 67 days, how much more you will be able to take in in 15 minutes, or maybe your interval six minutes a day. Once you get done with these 67 steps, I'm sorry, these 67 days of reading, I want you to up the interval a little bit. Don't go crazy. As Charlie Munger says, step by step you get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurt. He starts by saying, go to bed a little bit wiser than you were before. Step by step you get ahead, not in fast spurts. You don't need to try to bench press 500 pounds with your body or with your brain on day one. Bench press 50 pounds or five pounds if you're that weak. Read one minute a day. Move to two, move to six, move to 12. Try to get to 15 minutes, 18 months from today. If you're starting today, I'd like you to read 15 minutes three times a day. That's 45 minutes a day. But not today, not tomorrow, not next month. Do it in 67 day increments till you slowly build up 18 months from now to being a machine. If you read 45 minutes a day and the techniques you have learned today, you will for sure be able to get through 50 books a year and you'll probably be more like 100 books a year. That means a thousand books a decade. Now, or I should say it might not be a thousand new books but it'll be a thousand passes through a book per decade. Some of them will be repeat books on your 150. But of course your 150 book list is always being revamped and a new book dropped in and a new one taken out and better replaced with this, that, and the other thing. So over the course of your life, your career, the prime of your life, you will get through vast quantities of knowledge. 
you will skip the trial, tribulations, and errors that so many people make. You will make some mistakes. You will make errors. That is the human experience. But like Charlie Munger says, you'll make less than less people than most people. You can maybe avoid the big painful ones. You can maybe build like Sir Isaac Newton said, if I'm tall, it's because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, there may be a day when I see enough people a need for an um, even more advanced reading one. What I gave you today, even in this video here, was seven kind of fundamental building blocks because there's no reason to show people how to bench press 500 pounds if you're not bench, pre bench pressing 100. But soon I'll release one. It'll be advanced. It'll be a little more page to page, me showing you some techniques. This is enough. I've already, you know, implemented this. It's amazing to see people go, wow, this is working. I'm, I'm doing seven, you know, I'm reading just front chapter, back flap content, last chapter and a few chapters in between of these how-to books i'm getting so much i'm reading and taking a nap and learning skills i'm getting some classics that are cleaning up my brain getting great thoughts the greatest thoughts in history in my brain at night i'm falling asleep better and i'm getting courage and having better dreams and waking up with ideas that's another thing that'll happen i didn't mention that you start to get cool ideas because you slept on stuff that was rewarding and an investment in yourself. So to close this out and close this series out, I want you to answer a few things. Number one, uh, and this sounds weird question. Are you willing to commit to do multiple passes through a book? I talked about six or seven passes through a book. It's going to feel so unnatural because no one ever told you that. They just told you read a book to start to finish, but that's not a rule of nature. It's not a law of physics you must conform to. It's not a law of gravity. No rule that I can't read a book however I want. So are you willing to commit for the next 67 days to read a little bit unconventionally? That's the first question. You can say yes, no, and write a little bit about your thoughts about that. Uh, number two, are you willing to commit to 67 days of doing this to rewire your brain? Say yes and maybe say a little comment. What do you think will be easy? What do you think will be hard? Number three, are you willing to then have an 18 month time frame? And in that 18 months, you'll step by step, 67 days at a time, slowly ratchet up the amount of books that you read. Say yes or no in the third question and your thoughts about what it's gonna take for you to actually do that. Maybe you need to buy some more books. Maybe you need to look at my book list or other book lists. Maybe you need to throw some books away. Maybe you need to commit and do it with a friend, do a challenge. By the way, if you refer people to our site, it really helps grow and, and you can help other people and they can do the challenge with you, okay? So I hope this has been helpful. Stay tuned in the coming months for some more, even more advanced stuff, but this is enough for now. Remember, check out, uh, there should be a link somewhere around here to get the memory stuff. That's a whole separate stu uh, uh, teaching that I do on how to have recall, not just of the books you read, but you know of everything, how to remember quotes and how to remember your to-do lists and all that. So the other thing is, if you are in business, uh, check out the level two, the mini MBA entrepreneur stuff. If you're making over a million dollars, check out the inner circle that I have, private invitation only working with me. There should be a form you can uh, submit just to see if it'd be good to work together. Level two is this mini MBA investor entrepreneur. And if you're just getting started out, make sure you're in the regular 67 steps and VIP coaching. Come on the calls twice a month with me. We talk about health, wealth, love, and happiness with the world's smartest people in books, interviews, and so on. So thanks so much. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook. I post a lot of my reading. That's one thing. Uh, you'll see how I read in my schedule. Okay. So thank you so much and uh, stay strong, read more, but get an end result that you want, the good life, health, wealth, love, and happiness. Talk to you soon.